Hey, what's up guys, Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about the stretch reflex. So we're gonna talk about the mechanisms and the science of how the stretch reflex works, as well as give you some examples. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to lay the groundwork here, what we're looking at is a muscle with an intrafusal muscle spindle. So if we think about a muscle as having fibers that run all the way down the muscle, within those muscle fibers are some sensory intrafusal muscle fibers. So this is what we call muscle spindles. So muscles have some amount of sensory fibers within the actual contractile fibers. So these would be the intrafusal muscle spindle fibers represented in blue here, and then they would be throughout the muscle. And then these red ones are the extrafusal contractile fibers. So when we talk about the stretch reflex, we're actually talking about activation of the muscle spindle intrafusal fibers, and then the response that it causes. So when we're, for example, testing the patellar tendon reflex or even throwing a baseball or jumping, we're putting a quick stretch on the muscle. So what that quick stretch does is it activates the muscle spindles or the intrafusal spindle fibers. And when those muscle spindle fibers are activated, it's going to cause this response. So this is an afferent nerve, and we say an afferent nerve because it's going away from the muscle and to the spinal cord. So that muscle spindle, activated by a quick stretch is gonna activate this afferent nerve and then go into the spinal cord and it's gonna cause two different responses. The first response that it's gonna cause is it's going to feed back to the same muscle. So if we are stretching the pecs with a quick pec stretch during a baseball throw, we're gonna actually feed back to the pec muscle and cause muscle activation. So we're going to feed back to the muscle and activate the agonist muscle. Now why would we do this? For example, if we're in the layback phase of a baseball throw, we're gonna put a quick stretch on the pec, and this is kind of a protective mechanism to activate the pec so it doesn't overstretch. So that's gonna be the first response of the muscle spindles and of this muscle stretch reflex, is activation of the agonist muscle. Now, in addition to activation of the agonist muscle, we're gonna have another nerve pathway that's activated here, and that's gonna to be to the antagonist muscle. That same activation pattern of the muscle spindle going to the spinal cord is going to activate both of these nerves, the one that we just talked about, the agonist activation, but also it's going to send a nerve to the antagonist muscle, so to the opposite muscle. And what this is gonna cause is reciprocal inhibition. So as that nerve signal is going to the opposite muscle, it's actually gonna inhibit the opposite muscle, the antagonist muscle. So to review the two actions of this muscle spindle stretch reflex, is that agonist facilitation or agonist activation as well as the antagonist inhibition. So when we stretch the pec muscle, the pec muscle is gonna be facilitated or activated and then the opposite muscle somewhere on the posterior deltoid is gonna be inhibited. Another example of this is during the patellar tendon reflex. So we're using a reflex hammer to tap the patellar tendon and that's gonna cause a quick stretch of that tendon and a quick stretch of the quadricep muscle. So what's gonna happen is that signal is gonna go back to the quadricep and facilitate or activate that quadricep, which is why we see that leg extension movement. At the same time, we're gonna be inhibiting the hamstring to allow the leg to kick out. So as we tap that knee, we're gonna see activation of the quad and inhibition of the antagonist hamstring muscle. All right guys, so I hope that was helpful. If it was, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe for more videos. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram at The Movement System, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.